Promo Cat here. The next episode of the Friday Zone is going to be a lot of fun. I'm not kidding. Can you two keep an eye on that and let me know when it gets to 120? Totally, yeah. It's time. The sun is set, and it's time for all the wicked little monsters to emerge from the shadows and misbehave. So keep an eye out for the next episode of the Friday Zone. Right meow. Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by... The WTIU Children's Programming Endowment, ensuring quality children's programming for future generations of Hoosiers. Learn more at indianapublicmedia.org slash kidsfund. The IU School of Education, dedicated to improving, teaching, and learning in a diverse and rapidly changing world. More at education.indiana.edu. WFYI Public Media, inspiring Indiana with high quality educational content since 1970. By sharing stories and connecting people, WFYI inspires the best in our community. And these Indiana Public Television stations. Thank you. Why do seagulls fly over the sea? Because if they flew over the bay, they'd be bagels. Zone, everyone. I'm Cassia. And I'm Ethan. We've got a delicious show today, Cass. That's right. Our friends from the Terre Haute Children's Museum are here to tell us all about amazing, marvelous milk. And we'll make some cheese and butter, too. Yep. But first, let's howl with a song on, on the, the Friday, Friday Zone playlist. <laughs> Some dogs can scowl, some dogs can prowl, some dogs can lay around and grumble and growl. But the dogs in the north pulling sleds back and forth, they can howl. We can howl, 
Gravity being struck by a meteor in the deepest parts of the galaxy. But what's this? The incredibly useful exploits of duct tape enthusiast Limbo Duxton are able to hold the planet together, preventing annihilation. The success of his duct tape mixture ushers in a new era for the people of Tapian, one that revolutionizes architecture, agriculture, and even arts and crafts. Now, reveling in the amazement of this incredible super material, Tapian wishes to spread its duct tape culture with the rest of the galaxy. Greetings, Earth children, and welcome to Planet Tapian. I am your rather stylish host, Blimbo Duckton. You know, I may be an expert on all things duct tape, but you'll be surprised to know I actually have a rather remarkable fashion sense as well. Take my duct tape jacket, for example. These are expertly crafted, gene-encoded sleeves that actually contain raw potential energy giving me the power to lift most objects that exist on the ethereal plane. What? You say pure engineering ability has no merit when it comes to style? <sighs> well, my mother always did say the gold was a little flashy, but I think this is the marvelous opportunity I've been waiting for to show my true abilities in the world of fashion with some amazing duct tape bracelets. For this craft, you'll need to cut out a six inch strip of duct tape. This will be your primary beginning to most of the steps we are going to be repeating later. Once you have your six inch strip, tear it off and set it up like so. Now you're going to want to be very careful to make sure you align those edges correctly, making sure not to leave any sticky residue. It's okay if there's some, you can just fold it in like that. Now, once you have your little duct tape strip here, you can close it up like this, just fold it in half long ways, and then once short ways. Once you have this, you can grab any ordinary pair of earth scissors and use it to cut very carefully. Make sure you cut directly down the center and then down the top, leaving you with a sort of uh, a little bit of a T-shaped little, little duct tape strip. Now you'll need to fold it back up and proceed to make the little acquisition hole. And you can cut it long ways and then fold it once. And once you're there, you have to cut back into it. Once you have that cut, you'll be, or you'll be surprised to know that you actually have the essential component in making your bracelet. Now, in order to attach your bracelet strands together, you need simply slide this into the hole. And then slide this end into the other hole. Once you do that, you'll have the first components. And all you need to do is repeat this step multiple times, which will leave you with a rather remarkable looking duct tape bracelet. Just look at that. Now, with this, you may attend all of your Earthling events in style. Also, I can attend all of my long, cold nights in the laboratory in style as well. <laughs> I really do think I'm getting the hang of this whole fashion thing. In fact, I can't wait to... Wait, Mother, how did you even get this frequency? What? The bracelet's flashy too. No, it's, it's got pure style in it. All right, well, I better go take care of this. Oh, and remember, stick to what you know, but never be afraid to try something new. This is Flimbo Duckton signing off. Tapu, tapu. Hey guys, we're back with our friends Holly and Renee from the Terre Haute Children's Museum and we are talking about some cool stuff today. What are we learning today? Today we're going to take a look at Moo to You. How we get milk from that cow to you. So the question is, 
Why do cows make milk? What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. All Maybe right. For their babies? That, ah, there we go. Ah. We got it. <laughs> All right. Mammals produce milk for their babies. So, that mama cow, when she has that calf, produces milk. And the farmers let the baby have as much milk as it wants. But when it's done needing its milk, and it's gotten old enough, then the farmers continue to milk those cows, sometimes two or three times a day. Does anybody know where that milk is stored? When you looked at that picture. Udder. Mm. Yeah. Excellent. That's the udder. OK. So once that baby's done, we have to get that milk out. Have you ever seen something like this? That's somebody milking a cow, isn't it? So unfortunately, we couldn't bring a real cow. We brought this. <laughs> You guys wanna? The bottle is like the udder, and we're gonna turn it upside down, and this is what you're going to use to milk, and we're gonna try to get some milk in a bucket. All right, well, do we have Now, I think Ethan's gonna help us out, yeah. right? He's going to hold, hold the bottle. Yes, thank you, thank you. Okay, guys. Okay. All right, okay. upside down. Who wants to try upside this? Down. And then who wants to try to milk the cow? Okay. All right. Why don't you go ahead? Ooh. Oh. There oh. you go. Somebody else want to try? Yeah. What, oh, oh, no. Oh. Okay. Let's make sure we don't spill it. Is someone else want to try? Come on over here and try it. Go ahead and hold it straight up, Ethan. Oh, sorry. OK, it. cool. Sorry. Kind of like the udder. No, oh, there you go. There we go. Nice job. Now, what do you do if you have, like, 50 cows? Mm -hmm. They have to use milking machines. Have you ever heard or seen milking machines? Mm -hmm. oh. All right. Oh. So how have you seen a milking machine? Oh, way cool, yeah. Good play. So we brought a machine to help us. We'll take that away. All right. All right. Okay. So we're going to show you how those milking machines work. All right. Who, who didn't get to do that? You want to come up here and try the machine? Okay. okay. Going upside down, just like the udder. All right. So this has got to fit over the udder. And what's going to flow down this tube? Milk. Milk. It's going to go into this. This is a vacuum pump. It's connected to that as well. What is the vacuum pump going to take out of this jar to make that milk flow? Does anybody know? Air. Air. You got it. You're going to take that, push that up over that. Let's get it all around here. Nice. All right, we're going to turn that Be sure off. you push up high, and Cassie, you're going to have to really push, push down. down. Okay. Push against you me. You need right? a good oh, seal. There we go. Ooh, there, there it goes. It begins oh, to go. Nice. Wow. You are milking the cow. We're milking milk cows. Machine. That is so cool. How about that, guys? So they have like one of these connected to a bunch of cows at once to milk them. Okay. That's they right. do. Cool, it makes it more efficient. <laughs> oh, did you hear that sound? Yeah, the <laughs> suction, it, it like released. Uh -huh. That's really right. Cool. Well, thank you so much for your help. And I think after this, we are going to learn how to make something with milk. So we will see you soon. In the Friday's Child, it, it, it's time. Uh, it's time. The sun is set, and it's time for all the wicked little monsters to emerge from the shadows and misbehave. Hi, Zarg. Uh, Peggy, are you okay? No, Zarg. I have a headache, and the more I try to focus on what I am trying to read, the worse it gets. Would Peggy like Zarg to read to her? Oh. Would you, Zarg? That would be lovely. I don't want to fall behind on my summer reading challenge. Zarg will gladly read for Peggy. Is this your book? Yes, Zarg. It's a poem entitled A Boat Beneath a Sunny Sky by Lewis Carroll. The Jabberwocky Guy? Yes, but I promise there aren't any vorpal blades in this poem. Well, okay, Peggy. I will read the carol under protest. 
Thank you, Zarg. Mm. <clears throat> uh, children uh, three that nestle near a eager eye and willing ear p pleased a, a simple tale to hear La long has pallid that sunny sky echoes uh, fade and memories die autumn forests have slain July Peggy Yes, sir? How did Autumn slay July? Was it bloody? <laughs> no, silly. Lewis Carroll just means that the cold, icy mornings are making the seasonal summer plants and flowers retreat with the change of the season. Hmm. Oh, then why didn't he just say that? Well, he did, silly. Zarg is silly when the Carroll man speaks in riddles? Zarg. Please finish reading the poem. Hmm. Children yet, at the tale to hear, eager eye and willing ear, lovingly shall nestle near. In a wonderland they lie, dreaming as the days go by, dreaming as the summers die. <laughs> Oh. Hi guys, it's Sophie, and this is my friend Teddy. Are you ready to learn something new today? I wonder who that could be. Come in. Hey y'all. Hey, it's Handy Hannah. What are you doing here? Well, Nefarious Nathan asked me to come over and fill his bike tire for him. Something about needing it for his plans of world domination. So, what are you up to today? Well, not much, actually. We were looking for something new to learn today. Hey, do you think you could teach us how to fill a tire? I was fixing to ask y'all if you wanted to learn something new. Yes. Can you go over and grab that bike for me? Yeah. All right, let's put it right here, next to the table. So the first thing you need to know when filling a bike tire is what the recommended PSI for that tire is. What's PSI? Well, PSI stands for pounds per square inch. It means the amount of pressure inside the tire. What's pressure? Well, pressure is the amount of air that's pushing up against the inside of the tire. Okay. And so the first thing we need to do is look on the bike. Sometimes I'll have it on the tire. So right here, it says 50 PSI. So that's what this tire needs to get to. And down here is the valve. I use that to fill the tire. I'm gonna unscrew it right now so I can put my bike pump on. Would you like to come over here and help me fill the tire? Yep. Thank you, Teddy. All right, so this right here is called a foot pump. Kay. We use this because we can pump our foot on it and pump it right up. Okay. So this meter right here will tell us where we need to go and we can even turn this little red meter to the 50. So when this little black thing hits the 50, we know we're good to go. Okay, so first I'm gonna put this on the tire. All right, I put it on. I have to bring it up to lock it. And can you put your foot on top of this? Uh, but it keeps not going up to 50. You're good. Ready, keep going. Keep going. And we can even watch the tire and see if it's foot filling up. Oh wow, there we I go. feel it filling up. Feel it, see, feel how it's nice and tight. And the tire's great. Good job, Teddy. Thank you. Great job. Awesome. Did yeah. we do it? Yeah. Thank you so much for teaching us how to fill up a bike tire. My pleasure. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Welcome to Animal Yoga. My name is Priscilla, and I'm here to practice yoga together with you. Let's take a deep belly breath in and check how are we feeling in this very moment. Now bring our hands in front of our hearts. Namaste. Ready to begin? Did you know that humans are also animals? Yeah. 
in yoga, we have something we call the greeting, which is we say the word namaste. This word namaste means that the goodness inside of me says hi, recognizes the goodness inside of you. So we're going to look at the palms of our hands. And do you see those lines that we have? They are unique. Nobody else has lines like this in the whole earth. There's nobody else like us. We are special, we are important, and we are unique. So bring your hands in front of your heart. And with our good hearts, we're gonna take a deep breath in and we're gonna say our special word, namaste, okay? So breathing in. Namaste. Thank you for joining me. May all be peaceful. May all be well. May all be happy. Namaste. In the Friday zone. Friday. Hi, we are back with Renee and Caleb from the Terre Haute Children's Museum, and we are about to learn how to make something with milk. Yeah, right. There's lots of different things that we get out of milk, right? Do you know anything that you can think of that comes from milk? Cheese. Cheese, that's one thing. What else? Cheese. More cheese. And we got, and we got what do you say? How about cottage cheese? Ice cream. And ice, ice cream. cream? Yeah, cream. Ooh, cream's a good one. We're going to use some cream today. Let's show this picture here of what milk looks like after it's been sitting, after it comes from the cow. There are two different parts of it. There's the bottom part, that's what the milk part. Hmm. The top part is all the fats and the proteins, and that's okay. the cream. And we have put cream in this jar, and we are gonna use it to make butter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shake this, and it's going to separate out those fats from the rest of it. And we are actually gonna end up with two things inside of this jar instead of one. Oh, very cool. So all they need to do is shake it up, and that's the whole yeah, process? Yeah, they can do it like this, they can do it like this, they can do it like this. Cool. So you want to? Oh, can you guys help us out? Take that, that over there. Yeah, we're gonna. We're gonna Perfect. Shake it. shake it as long as you can, and then pass it on to the next person. So what are we gonna do up here? We're gonna start on the cottage cheese Perfect. while they're okay. shaking. We're gonna warm this up. I need you to measure out one cup of milk. Cool. Can the two of you manage that? Sure. Here, can you just tell me when to stop? I just need a little bit go. more. All the way up to the top red line. There we go. Right. Is that good? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So can you pour that in here? Okay, now we're gonna put this back on here. And we're gonna heat it up. Do we need to stir? Do we need to do anything? No, we, all we have to do is time it, uh, t the temperature oh, cool, of the it. the temperature. We need to get it to 120 degrees, okay? Cool. So can you two keep an eye on that and let me know when it gets to 120? Totally, yeah, Okay, course. let's look at our cream. And can you describe what you're seeing inside there? So we have to stop at 120. Good. Okay, keep shaking it. <laughs> keep shaking it, because there's going to be a magic moment here where it turns into two different Ooh. things. You're not hearing it anymore, right? So there's a difference, right? And when you start hearing it be liquid again, that's the magic moment, because it turns into... Do you feel, does it feel different than it did before? Yep. Because I think... Yep. Yeah. Oh, wow, look at the... So look we're at, at 120. Look at the size. <gasps> so the milk's at 120 oh, cool. degrees. It is, okay. So now what do we do? Um, we are going to put it into a bowl. Oh, Here. Now. So can you... Do you want to do that, Grace? You can't hear it. Keep going. Now, Grace, we need a tablespoon of vinegar, and then we're going to start, Ethan, stirring okay. it as soon as she puts cool. it in there. Take it. Now pour it in there? Uh-huh. And now you stir. What's gonna happen here is that we are actually congealing the cottage cheese. So I'm sure they have like machines to do this. In, uh, in the factories, yes. Factories. Now what does it look like? Do you see the clearness? And then the cottage cheese is the white where it's congealed together. With the butter, we're doing the congealing with the shaking. Yeah. With this, we used a chemical by using mm. the vinegar. So, so now we want to pour this onto here so that we can okay. drain it and we'll see our cottage cheese. 
Wow. Yes. Oh, wow. Now does it look more like cottage that, cheese? Uh, yeah, I was getting a little concerned. I was like, oh wait, is this what it's supposed to look like? I forgot that you have to strain it. That's very yeah. cool. Yeah. Do you guys like cottage cheese? Cool. Any of you? You guys oh, want to try some cottage cheese? cheese? Well, put it cool. here off to the side. All now right. we're going to check on okay. our butter. Okay. okay. Thanks, Grace, so much wow, for your help. Wow, so look at this. So is our butter finished? Okay, so you see how it like um has... Yeah, we're solid. gonna drain it again. Cool. <laughs> Shall we do that? We should. So are we gonna get to try these things? Yeah, you get to cool. eat it. Well, so then this is butter that's going to have um, the butter milk and butter. So you made from cream into two things. Okay, very cool. Well, thank you so much for teaching us about milk and uh, uh, and cows and stuff. And thank you guys for joining us on the Friday Zone. Remember to visit our website, FridayZone.org, to watch past episodes, play games, and see behind-the-scenes photos. And remember to live, learn, and play the, the Friday, Friday Zone, Zone way. way. Now should we just go over here and try this stuff? Anybody interested who wants to try the cottage cheese? And the butter. Or who wants the cracker? <laughs> How about some cracker with butter? Oh, wow. Thank you so much. Yeah, you got a definitely right. You want to help see that? And here's the cottage cheese. You want it with butter? Take it from a spoon. Okay, that. Wow. I'm not going to do it. 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 That looks amazing. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like butter? <laughs> yeah. It's really easy. Really Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by the WTIU Children's Programming Endowment, ensuring quality children's programming for future generations of Hoosiers. Learn more at indianapublicmedia.org slash kidsfund. The IU School of Education dedicated to improving, teaching, and learning in a diverse and rapidly changing world. More at education.indiana.edu. WFYI Public Media, inspiring Indiana with high quality educational content since 1970. By sharing stories and connecting people, WFYI inspires the best in our community. And these Indiana Public Television stations. Thank you. Do you cool cats have the perfect idea for the Friday Zone? Want to share a hobby? Tell us about an event? Or let us know what's happening in your town? Then contact us on our website at fridayzone.org or send an email to zone at indiana.edu. Right meow!